What up, people? This is Jason here from Custom Cans, and today we're going to look at something a little bit different. Uh, I've been contacted quite a lot recently about gaming headsets, that kind of stuff, so where companies will bring out a new game and they want a, a load of headsets to give away or something like that, and then we customise them. So I've been looking at headsets a bit more, and I've noticed that Bayer Dynamic have got two new models out, the MMX100 and the MMX 150 and uh, I thought we'd get them in to have a look at see if they're suitable for us to kind of customize and at the same time obviously we can pull them apart and have a look inside. I'm gonna plug these in and have a listen to them as well because I'm quite interested to see how they sound. Initially I was gonna just do one video with both of them because I thought they were the same headphone just with different leads because one's analog and one's got USB in and I assume that they were just after the DAC you know digital analog converter in line in the cable somewhere and then use the same headsets but they are different uh, after looking at the images of them and stuff so uh, I'll probably do a separate video on the 150 today we're gonna have a look at the D at the MMX 100 see how they're made see how they differ from the kind of pro stuff that we're normally pulling apart first off you look at the difference in the packaging they clearly gave one a bit more love than the other um, <laughs> the, the 150 seems to me the main thing and the 100 they, they haven't really bothered with so let's, uh, let's, let's get these apart and see what ting up guan so as you can see quite nice packaging with foam cutouts and stuff like that obviously you lose a few environmental points for having foam cutouts rather than cardboard which is what they use on a lot of their pro stuff and you've got another sheet of foam there which I mean recycling the box would be difficult because you'd have to remove the foam to make it recyclable because you have to separate out all the different different items so not great from a recyclability point of view but it looks nice it looks nice <laughs> And it will protect the headphones in transit. So you've got the actual headphones there. Yeah, they look quite nice. Feel pretty solid. And look, we've also got the microphone here, which is a boom boom mic, which is detachable, obviously. So that just plugs in the in the side there for all of your bad mouthing of foreign children. Comfort wise, pretty comfortable. Let's have a Let's have a listen. I know normally I would just pull them apart. So we're going to have some cables in the box here we? underneath the, the foam. There we go. That's, that looks like it. So we've got two cables. Um, one with the normal audio what's it's there. One for mic, one for sound. And then you've got a four pole one as well. So if you're plugging it into a phone or a laptop or something that's got a four pole connector. I suppose like PlayStation, Xbox, they've probably got a four pole connector with a single cable. So depending on what that, that's more often used for the PC with the separate, separate what's it. Let us have a quick listen to these. So you've got a five pole jack on there and quite a proprietary connector. So it's, you're only really gonna be able to use the original bare dynamic cable in here. You won't be able to find additional cables for them. Yeah, they actually sound pretty good. Um, not not the kind of usual bare dynamic sound signature. They don't have the the quite uh, the, the big peak in the treble that often a lot of bare dynamics do. They seem a, a bit more bass heavy. They've got quite quite good bass, a little bit boomy, but uh, it drops down nice and low. Yeah, sound quality wise, these are pretty. Good. It's very acceptable. The pads are super comfortable. You know, it feels like a feels like they're studio ones where you can just wear them all day and without the treble peak they're probably going to be less fatiguing so they are probably very good for gaming long gaming sessions and you can tell that when they were tuning these they've tested them with probably the gaming community rather than you know the normal studio and audio files that they deal with because they have given them a different sound signature which is probably more in keeping with what people are used to from gaming headsets but you just get probably a bit more detail than some of the cheaper gaming headsets and um, yeah they sound pretty good they sound pretty good it'd be interesting to get them on the Test rig and see what the measurements look like. Let's have a go. Hmm, so interesting. Yeah, very different, very different sound signature from the, you know, very different frequency plot from what you get on most bare dynamic. So they've got quite a, quite a weird hump around sort of four to six hundred hertz. They've got quite a big hump. And then the treble is a lot flatter than you get on most bare dynamics where you normally get a bit of a peak in the treble. As I said, they sounded they sounded pretty good when I listened to them, but um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting seeing how they are tuned differently to one of their audio file or studio studio headphones. Uh, right. So, without further ado, let's have a look inside and see how these are made. If I just remove the microphone, uh, just get the little camera out as well, so we can kind of see what we're up to. Okay. So on the microphone, we've got a four pole four pole jack. Um, 
which is unusual because obviously you only need two poles for the for the actual microphone. So I'm wondering whether they've used a four pole jack so you can plug this straight into like a laptop or phone or something like that and use it as an external microphone, which would be a nice design feature if that is the case. Don't know if it'll fit in my brick. Yes, yes, it shows up as a microphone on there. So, yeah, so that might give it a second use. You can, you know, if you you're streaming or whatever and you're doing it on your phone, you might be able to get slightly better sound out of, a, out of an external microphone. So that might be useful for some, some people. Let's see how we get into these now. I was wondering if they had the same headband as the Pro X range, because it looked a little bit like that, but no, it is different. Uh, so pads don't unhook, looks like. Yeah, so they're unscrew. So you the kind of a proprietary thing. You won't be able to use the same pads on these as you can on the 770 and 990. It's a different different kind of pad. The screwdriver. So you've got three screws under here. Again, on their on their pro range and audio file range, they tend to be the driver tends to be clipped in with a retaining ring rather than screwed in. So these have got screws instead. Oh. Yeah, so inside we've got a, a separate little enclosure, so that's the actual driver. You've got a bit of felt around the outside, which will help with some of this kind of edge diffraction or something like that, where, it bounce, where it's coming over the edge. And then you've got acoustic silk over some vents there, um, which again will be to do with tuning. The advantage of having a little separate enclosure in here is it means it doesn't matter what you put in here. So you've got loads of circuit boards in this side and you haven't got them in the other side because most of the tuning is done in this little enclosure, you won't have an imbalance from left to right if you've got one side more full than the other. Uh, this extra part of the ear cup here will help with noise isolation, that kind of stuff. So you should, should block out more noise with the two chambers and make it a bit easier to tune. So that could be potentially why well they've done that. And looking at it, it's got a little, little base port on there, which goes out through a hole in the side of the ear cup. Yeah. Um, so it's got a tiny little base port in there. So let's undo these hinges. So the hinges look like they're screwed in with four screws. And they are the same screws that hold in the driver, so that makes it a bit easier. It's got this little piece here, like a hinge cover that holds the, holds the hinges in place. So a lot of screws so far. Uh, Bear Dynamic normally are quite lean on the old part count. Uh, they're, they're quite clever, they don't have too many screws. But these ones, a lot, a lot of screws, a lot of screws in this one. Uh, so yeah, slightly different design philosophy. And then again, you've got two screws in here, holding on these little lugs, which stop it from rotating too much within the hinges. So that's that. Uh, let's get these little bits out here. So you've got a, a volume control and then a button to turn the microphone off. Get those out. So that's the, that's the little volume control. And here's the main board where everything attaches to. Yeah, so it looks like the potentiometer, the, the volume control's got different screws. Let's not get those mixed up. So let's have a look. So that's the little, uh, little separate board on there for the potentiometer which adjusts the stereo volume in the earphones. You've got the two sockets there, uh, one for the microphone in and one for the main cable. And you've got a little uh, on-off switch for the microphone, so a physical switch on there. On the back, what does it say? Let's see, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it says TYGR50Z main PCB. So I'm wondering if there was, if these were originally gonna be in their Tiger range, uh, they've got a T. They've got a Tiger 300, which is kind of like an 880, 990 hybrid for gamers, which is retuned for gamers. This is Tiger 50, so I'm wondering if originally these were going to be the like a low end in the Tiger range, and then they've decided to brand them as MMX instead. Uh, probably a little bit of history there somewhere. Uh, Change their mind at some point. This feels like it's pretty solid, made from nylon, something like that. And then you've got these little uh, orange accent pieces in here. And it looks like they are clipped in. Can I get one out? Yeah, so that's come out. So that's the little orange accent piece just to give it an accent color. I don't know if you necessarily, because it's going to be covered up. You know, when you've got the microphone and the cable plugged in, you won't be able to see it. But uh, it has. It's, you know, it looks, it looks nice. And as far as manufacturing, because it's clipped in, you can press it in pretty quickly. It's going to be easier than having a little sticker in there or having to pad print it or something like that. It's probably easier just to have a little extra bit of plastic that that clicks in. 
And let us see if we can get into the headband. Yes, I'm seeing two little screws under here and they look like they're different screws again to the, the other ones we've encountered. So we've got three different types of screws so far. These ones have got a flat face which makes them sit flush when they're, when they're screwed in. Is this going to come apart easily? No. That feels like there's more screws in there somewhere. Um, but I can get that bit out. Uh, so that's the actual yoke. That's a very traditional biodynamic part, isn't it? With the pressed steel and you've got the indentations in the back there. So this is also a clicking mechanism. I think it's the same one used in the T70, T90 and a few other models, which is quite nice. It's the good one with a with a spring and a ball bearing in there, which is, which is quite nice. And you've also got this little bit of uh, foam on top so that as it moves around, it doesn't tap on this and transfer sound to the ear caps there. They've used the fancy clicking mechanism, not the not the DT770 and 990 one. Can I get the head pad off? Oh, yeah, that's clicked. That's all clicked in by the look of it. So that's the head pad, which is replaceable. So ear pads and head pads, both replaceable. Beardamic are usually very good about buying, selling parts, so you can probably buy replacement ones of those if they get all scummy or worn out. And underneath we have more screws, and these ones are silver, so slightly different. It's fascinating, like we, when we make stuff, it's in pretty small numbers, you know, maybe we'll get hundreds of something made, uh, whereas a bigger, bigger company like Bear Dynamic are going to get thousands or hundreds of thousands of things to a made. So maybe just having little silver screws, the saving of a fraction of a penny versus making them black where you can't see them might save, uh, <laughs> might save a, a few quid on a huge run of them. So under here, uh, you got this part here with a channel in it, which holds the cable uh, and again these are marked left and right so they won't be symmetrical and I think that's because you've got the little cut out here that the cable goes through so they could have made this part symmetrical and saved themselves a bit of tooling costs um, but it would have had an extra little notch on the other side which wasn't used so uh, they've spent a bit more by having to tool two separate parts but yeah it looks a little bit neater and it also means that they can imprint left and right here and it does say oh it says made in China because most most bear dynamics are made in Germany. That is interesting. Let's see what it says on the box. Designed and engineered in Germany, made in China. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Looking at it, it's put together like a lot of the Chinese headphones. They often have lots of tiny weeny screws, whereas the bear dynamic ones usually don't have so many screws. I think they definitely had some input from their Chinese partners about how it was going to be manufactured and, and that kind of stuff. But I can, you know, that Biodynamic would have done all the fancy tuning of the sound and tested it, and obviously that's a very biodynamic part. But some of the things feel a little bit, a little bit, the way China builds stuff. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a different design philosophy. When you pull a lot of stuff apart, you can different. When they're made in different places, they seem to build them slightly differently. And uh, yeah, that's quite interesting because I was pulling it apart and I was thinking it doesn't feel doesn't feel like the other bear dynamics and that could be why because these ones are made in China as opposed to Germany just put together in a slightly different way a lot more screws um, so they seem pretty well pretty well made they sound pretty good I think these are 89 pounds which is which is pretty decent considering you can get a microphone and it'll be a good microphone as well because it'll be a bear dynamic microphone the drivers are, are pretty good you know they sound pretty good but the tuning you know I, I don't know they would have been tuned for gamers it's a slightly different sound to, to what I'm used to but they do sound pretty good, like uh, uh, accuracy and things, they seem pretty accurate, which again is very important when you're, when you're playing games. I'm not sure, I'm not sure these are ideal for what you want to do, because if we want to pull them apart and customise them and things like that, because there's so many parts that we've got to pull apart when we do it, you know, if it takes, if we've got to make a hundred pairs of them and it takes us 20 minutes to dismantle and rebuild each one, that the, the time adds up and it's going to add to the cost. And at some point it's almost like we might as well go for the MMX 300, like the, the, the higher up one, because we'll be able to pull that apart much quicker than the, than the lower models. So it'll be interesting to see the MMX 150 and how that differs. Um, so I'm going to get these back together and then we'll do another video for the MMX 150, see what's in those and maybe compare the compare the two of them. So anyway, it's been super awesome hanging out. It's quite interesting seeing inside uh, Bear Dynamics basic gaming system and also, oh yeah, yeah where we saw the, the, the board and it said Tiger 50. I wonder if that one's gonna be like Tiger 100 or something like that. And they were, oh, they were different models, but uh, they changed the name. But anyway, uh, super awesome hanging out. Um, I'm gonna get these back together, blah, 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 blah. Do the other ones. 
join me for the next video if you want to see what's in the MMX 150 and what the difference between the two of them is because uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to find out. Anyway, Jason out.